This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, buddy! And guess. Welcome back to more Miles Edge Face Attorney Investigations 2 Prosecutor's Path, everybody. We are still on Forgotten Turnabout and Part 1. I thought end Part 1 ended as soon as Logic Chess was over. But, but I guess nope. not. So Anyhow, we're now at we're the headquarters the PIC. pain in charge. And apparently Kay is here because oh, she's the ooh. defendant. Sebastian's here because he's the best. So and Amad is here because I don't chair. know. I'm wondering if that was for the chick that died. For Jill. Freaking Jill. If, it, if that was for freaking Jill or for Justine. Good question. Anyhow, it's April 6th, 8.30 a.m. Oh, man, they're doing this early. Ten members are present. The quorum has been met. From here on out, let the council begin. Today's deliberation shall be about Miles Edgeworth's aptitude and ability as a prosecutor. Oh, wait, maybe it was him who was supposed to be talking at the beginning. Oh, whoops. Let our members discuss this matter with a clear conscience of the goddess of law. Oh, I don't care. A clear conscience? Don't make me laugh. Courtney, please give us your report. On April 5th, Prosecutor Edgeworth carried out an illegal investigation and resisted arrest. He was arrested by two of the members who caught him in, our, in the act, myself and Blaise DeBest. Prosecutor Edgeworth disrupted the investigation of attorney J Jill Crane's murder. He claims that the culprit, Kay Faraday, was arrested without sufficient evidence. Even now, his claim remains unchanged. Tell us more about the murder incident. On April 5th, the victim's body was found here in the PIC meeting room. Regarding the details... I, Sebastian DeBest, the best prosecutor, will enlighten you. Oh boy. The prosecutor in charge, Sebastian DeBest, will explain the rest of the details. The murder happened on the night of April 4th. The victim was one Jill Crane. Duh. <laughs> That's creepy. Wait. <laughs> Did, I didn't realize Satan was the conductor. <laughs> Bro, Satan himself. Okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Here's what I want to know. Oh, the blue badger is staring people, into your soul. So the blue badger staring into my soul. I'm wondering, are all these people debating over the illegal evidence? Are they all members of the PIC? It's literally because just the PIC puts on masks. Just, yes. <laughs> I want that piece of it. I want that one. I want the teddy bear. Oh, you know who the guy in the center reminds me of? <laughs> Motley, do something. I mean, it, it's probably... Dick Dastardly, who would win every episode of Wacky Races if he just didn't cheat. It's, it's either Waluigi <laughs> Or it is... Or the Satan. No, or it's, um... John Doe. John Doe. That's On the same night, a black market auction was being held in this very meeting room. I guess Miss Crane was taking part in the auction. Yup. That's it. The murder occurred in the middle of the auction, did it not? When Miss Crane was found, she was dressed like the conductor of the auction. However, based on the fact that the auction continued after the murder occurred, I deduce that Miss Crane could not have been the conductor. We deduce that. <laughs> you weren't the one who made that deduction. Sebastian, please show everyone the basis for the arrest of the culprit. You got it, Justine. Kay Faraday was unable to bear the weight of her good conscience. <laughs> Hang on, let me, let me just, uh... <laughs> what is he doing like this? I think How does like, this look on the cover of National Geographic? Exactly. Well, I think what it is, it's, um, uh, you know how, like, when you see someone far away, far away, not far away, you could be like, I'm gonna squish your head. <laughs> it's like, I'm crushing your face. It's like, <laughs> I'm crushing your face. It's, I think it's like that, where it's like, oh yeah, uh. I think this is the cover of the, um, wanted poster. Oh. It's like that. Have I you don't seen know. this wizard? Yeah. <laughs> I believe you mean her guilty conscience. Yes, it was her guilty conscience that drove her to confess the crime. According to her confession, on the roof of this building, she met a figure in a red raincoat on a viewing platform. So Crane was wearing a red raincoat. Yes, that's correct. The culprit used the conductor's clothes as a red herring to mislead us. At the time of the murder, Miss Crane was wearing a red raincoat. It was I who discovered the raincoat near this building. 
He did? I'm sure it was the forensics team who found it. To be more precise, it was the forensics team under Sebastian's orders who discovered it. I thought as much! According to the blood analysis, uh, the person in the red raincoat and Miss Crane were the same person. The decisive evidence is the culprit's own confession. She testified that she killed her. That's right, the culprit is Kay Faraday. It couldn't have been anyone else but her. Well then, Edgeworth, if you have any objections, let's hear them. I have no objections. I see, I see. It seems all the fight's gone out of you after your little overnight stay. I have no objections to your claim that I investigated illegally. I admit to that. However, I object to the claim that Kay is the culprit. I will testify that Sebastian's investigation was fair and just. Well, yeah, he's too stupid to do anything, like, criminal. <laughs> 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 of course it was, Justine. Don't you know that I'm the fairest of them all? <laughs> Edgeworth, my boy. Despite how things may seem, I actually kind of like you. Wait, so if you look in the mirror... Like it's it, like the you look in the mirror. It's like oh, is Snow White gonna be in there? It's like the best. Just like <laughs> <laughs> I gotta kill Snow White now. That's like when Waluigi. That's like when Little Mermaid comes up to the surface and sees Waluigi. <laughs> Magic Eight Ball. Will I meet the person I love? <laughs> Probably not. Magic Eight Ball. Why are you being so mean? Don't shake me. I'm filled with nitroglycerin. <laughs> what? <laughs> Waluigi is the Magic Eight Ball. Oh. <laughs> if and this is just an if, you see. If you were to withdraw your objection, you might be sitting on this side of the bench tomorrow. And then Edgeworth decides to do that and join the PIC. <laughs> I'll ask you one more time, Edgeworth. Do you have any objections? Don't take me for a fool. Ooh, I'd advise to watch what you say. This man is the one who should watch what he's saying. I'm talking about the case, not about a chair. I demand a testimony. By all means, let me hear it. I want to know how the PIC understands this case. A testimony from us, eh? Fine then, if that's what it takes to make you happy. I only care about people's happiness, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney, give him the materials from the investigation. Sir, but that's... It's the end of the line for him. I'll let him out, <laughs> I'll let him go out in a blaze of glory. If you insist, Mr. Chairman. Received evidence from Judge Courtney, so we get all our evidence back. <laughs> Why don't we have Courtney give the testimony? I have no objections. M Mr. Edgeworth. Don't worry, Kay. You just watch from over there. <laughs> Summary of the case. Miss Crane went to the black market auction as a customer. We're going to ignore the fact that there was a black market auction here in the first <laughs> Nobody case. needs to investigate this Nobody at all. Nobody needs to know anything about this. Also, the fact that I was here. Mm. <laughs> none of my business. <laughs> that's like the Kermit yeah. drinking the candle. But that's none, none of my, my business. business. Drinking the candle? That was Morgan Fay who was drinking a candle. No, he was drinking a candle. He was drinking Lipton iced tea. <laughs> I thought it was a candle. Oh, yeah, that famous meme of Kermit drinking the candle. I thought it was! <laughs> Seriously, I want to see the picture after. Uh, the red raincoat was one of the items up for auction. We believe that she left her seat after winning the bid for it. The only exit from the storeroom is the hatch that leads to the viewing platform. No. Miss Crane went out to the viewing platform where she was attacked by Kay Faraday. That was how she met her end. And that concludes my summary of the case. The red raincoat was up for auction. Is that a fact? It is quite likely. The red raincoat had been a piece of evidence in the assassination attempt of the president of Zhang Fa, as you well know. Oh yeah, same game. Really, yes! <laughs> this game, that third case was so stupidly long. I know. That like, what was the second case? The prison case with Nightmare. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And with Wimp the Guy. Woman. A wimp guy with the monkey, yeah. yeah. Originally, it should have been stored in an appropriate place. But when I asked about it, I learned that it went missing. And it somehow made its way to the black market auction? Certainly a natural conclusion. My, my. Well done, Courtney. Your explanation is as clear as ever. Just ignore the tears in my goggles. I am much obliged. Prosecutor Edgeworth, 
Will you concede defeat now? Heh. <laughs> Sorry, but I don't plan on it. I'm waiting for Francisco to pop out from behind a statue and be like, ka chow <laughs> ka <-chow? laughs> With her whip. Oh. <laughs> like, just, I don't know. I see. I am relieved. Relieved? What does she mean? Come to think of it, her reason for questioning me yesterday remains a mystery. Just what is she thinking? I think Justine secretly wants to overthrow this as well. But oh. she can't. Because of her position. Because she's in the PIC. Like, I think it's like one of those where it's like, she joined the PIC and she's like, ooh, this is a shady business. Oh, Maybe crap. I don't want to be part of it. But, but it's like, you can't leave. Because you know too much. Oh. And then they like, take you down. Pain does not let her leave. It's quite a shame. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure if you were like, I think like she like doesn't want to be part of this, but is like in too deep and is like secretly trying to overthrow it. Or yeah. if you're like, she's trying to overthrow like, the main guy so she can be the chairman. <laughs> no, because she, if she was that way, I think she'd be way more forceful. But hmm. the fact is like, she's becoming more and more passive as the cases have continued. Okay. I've noticed. Interesting. She hasn't been overthrowing us as much. Yeah, she went to the black so, you're saying that a member of the PIC was involved in illicit dealings? Regarding that, I... I have no response. Oh, it's okay. It's pretty common for people to take by I mean, uh, <laughs> He's right, you know. After this hearing is over, we're gonna have to clean up our act. A splendid decision, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> no more black market dealings. Scouts are. <laughs> he's, he's throwing that match a little close to her. Or um, the lighter. <laughs> Hey, uh, Courtney, you're not using a lot of hairspray, are you? This feeds my get messy. You need to smoke. <laughs> now, now. It is only natural, you see. There's no need to flatter me, you know. <laughs> but, you know, that has nothing to do with you at all, Edgeworth. <gasps> because by then, you won't even be a prosecutor anymore, you see. Well, now that this tearful business has been cleared up... <laughs> yes, sir, I will continue. The red raincoat was one of the items. Are, are you still, like, your voice for him is not good? No, I think it's fine. Because I remember, what, like, you're like, that would, should not be the voice for to him. To me, I thought he'd be more of, like, the, hey. Like, not... Hey. No, not, no, not that. No. Like, but once you said he was 68, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that And he has a lighter. I'm assuming he chain smokes. I, I, Why else would he have a lighter? Maybe he likes lighting matches. He likes lighting his coupons on fire. He, he doesn't have an actual stove, so you gotta go the... He just no. kicks like cans of beans over a lighter. That would take forever. <laughs> no, I meant like... I go through gas really no, fast. No, like a wood-burning stove. We have to like... Oh. The wood to burn, maybe. <laughs> he, he doesn't seem like the most well-off person. His, his wife's dead. He's only the chairman of the most corrupt group in the game. A mob the mob. He's only the leader of the Moran family. Exactly. <laughs> so the red raincoat was also up for auction? Yes, it had belonged to Shelley de Killer. Based on the circumstances, we must consider that it was an, it was an item up for auction, you see. And Shelley de Killer was like, I gotta buy it back. That was when what he wore when he targeted the president of Zane Fa. Yeah. There was a mannequin that was positioned unnaturally amongst the auction goods. That may have been where the red raincoat had been on display. I thought they were just into, like, naked torsos of women. <sighs> Do you know how the goods were procured? We're currently investigating it. But it's none of your concern, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Why'd she call him Prosecutor? I mean, technically, this is the hearing to see if he'll be stripped of his badge or not. But they already took his badge, like, as No, far... Edgeworth, like, threw his badge down. I know. But as far as she's concerned, like, even the previous case, she was kind of like, you will soon be an ex-prosecutor Edgeworth. Like, blah, 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 blah. You will soon be going into exile in the wilderness for 40 years. <laughs> Before you go to the promised land. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Now I know what you're talking about. Soon you'll be nothing more than an ordinary individual. And then you will be finished. It seems the results of this deliberation have already been decided. Enough about me. Please continue about your testimony. Since the raincoat had been up for auction, we believe that she left her seat 
Who would, like, bid on, like, this is the red raincoat that Shelly the Killer was wearing and his blood is on it? So we start the bidding at $10. <laughs> I really want that coat. I'll the bid my, on Oh, thank ring. goodness my raincoat was broken now. <laughs> I want a new one. <laughs> my raincoat was broken. Not stained. <laughs> not ripped. Broken. Why, why would you get an already stained raincoat because your raincoat is stained? Because it's, like, cool. It's, like, why do people... <laughs> it's a red stain on a red raincoat. Oh, no, no, it's... <laughs> it's like when people get pre-ripped jeans. Oh, those are so stupid. I mean, I'm, I'm wearing pre ripped Yeah, you're, shorts. you're kind of wearing jorts. I'm not wearing shorts. How even dare you? They're jeans that are just shorts. Are These are... Not? No. Jorts are, like, to here. Also, jorts are, like, literally a pair of jeans that you could chop to. <laughs> could chop. <laughs> No, these are like actually short. We've spent like 10 minutes on this one testimony and we haven't even pressed every statement yet. Why would the victim immediately leave her seat? That had to do with how the auction was conducted. It seems that after winning the bid, the winner was required to pay for the item immediately. They didn't have enough cash. That matches up with Miss Hart's testimony. Oh, who we? <laughs> we believe that Miss Ra Miss Crane, I keep saying Miss Rain. Miss Crane paid her bid for the raincoat, and then immediately tried to leave the auction. The only exit from the storeroom is the hatch. The victim was a PIC member. Couldn't she have also just left from the meeting room? If she had done so during the auction, then its existence would have been revealed to the public. It's not like there's like 50 people outside the door like, Oh my gosh, I want to get into the black oh, market! This is where the black market is so we can help <laughs> friends of Sky has to join! I'm so excited for the black market today. It's not gonna be like that. <laughs> Since Miss Hart knew about it, it seems the cat is already out of the bag. The customers were required to enter and exit from the hatch. Miss Crane was simply following protocol. Considering where the murder took place, she must have tried to leave through there. Ooh. Miss Crane went out to the viewing platform, and she was attacked. Why would Kay do such a thing? I don't know. We intend to question her about that later. Later? That seems to be your favorite time for interrogations. If the culprit was aware that the cul- the cul- the customers- Oh, the customers! The customers were required to exit from the hatch, it would have been easy to lie and wait for the ambush. Miss Crane was attacked when she was leaving the hatch. Sebastian's being pretty quiet. Also, so is Lana. Lana's never this quiet. She's like, Who we? I darn tootin' took a photo, and you better believe it, and it's gonna be a perfect thing. And this is. And Bear decisive... likes to say it with his laugh. <laughs> this is decisive evidence. <laughs> Met her end. What do you mean by that? She passed away. Or to be more precise, she was murdered. The candelabra was one of the items in the auction. Therefore, Kay should not have been able to get her hands on it. <sighs> if she was able to lie and wait for the attack, then she must have known about the storeroom. If she sneaked into the storeroom during the auction, she couldn't have obtained it. Now, if we only had some way to know for sure where the candelabra was during the entire auction, you know, how about it? Humph. There is no such evidence. My apologies. We hope to find that evidence soon. Edgeworth, it's too bad, you know. Seems you won't be able to use this line of attack. The victim encountered the culprit on top of the roof and the crime occurred there. According to her reasoning, the murder took place at the viewing platform. But was that really the case? And then they dumped her the body down the ladder. Some piece of evidence must tell the whole story behind it. I should try looking again. In the, actually, what happened is the black market's happening, and someone kicks the body down the, the, the lift thing, and it goes just... Well, we know that there was the blood on the blood lift. Blood on the hidden lift, so sorry. What do you mean that's not wrong? Maybe that's not a, right. Maybe there's a different statement. Judge Courtney, there is a contradiction in your testimony. Oh, wait, this is the same mistake that we made last oh, time. I, I could not understand anything you just said because you were yawning while saying it. And why not? I'm so sorry. I was up till 4 a.m. Because it's <laughs> obvious you're bluffing. Justine, if you're staying up that late coaching the junior varsity basketball team, <laughs> you really need to... <laughs> Yo! Is that the impression I give off? <laughs> That's just the impression that I get. 
Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> yeah, we, we made this mistake before down. because uh, it's the the, co the uh, meeting room. room. Well, there's wait. blood. There's blood everywhere. There's blood on the ceiling, blood on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we I thought there was like the a piece of evidence that said like blood dripped down from the ceiling. Key card? No. Lot of That's the one we just did. Was it this? Objection. Nope. Objection? Objection? Nope. Objection? No. No, no. no, no. Okay. We'll That's over. right. Judge Courtney, I have found it to be strange for a while now. Why is Miss Hart here with us? She is an eyewitness to this case. Isn't it only natural for her to be in the attendance? Aw, oh, shucks. <laughs> I reckon I'm more of an ear, ear witness than an eyewitness. Heh. <laughs> it seems that gaining the trust of others isn't your strong point, Judge Courtney. Perhaps I simply do not wish to be as tactless as you. It appears you have failed to get the witness to tell you the most vital information. Please look at this photo. This was taken by Miss Hart. This photo seems to have been taken in the storeroom. And what of it? According to your reasoning, the incident took place on the viewing platform. However, Miss Hart encountered the incident in the storeroom. That's right, it had taken place just before this photo was taken. Wait, wait! If that's true, then Justine's reasoning! Exactly. It does not hold up. What? 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 Miss Hart, allow me to ask you again. You saw the person in the photo with your own eyes, correct? I sure did. I seemed plain. I seemed plain as day with my own two eyes. And what did you think at the time? I figured it was about to get me a big scoop. You know. I guess that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> that's not what I meant. What did you think of the person? Huh? Well, I reckon she'd help me bring home the bacon. Are you mocking me? <laughs> Just don't make that scary old face. It was just a harmless little joke. The person in the red raincoat? I reckon they were the culprit. I hope you understand now. The crime occurred in the... <gasps> I didn't finish. <laughs> Prosecutor Edgeworth, I cannot understand your argument if you do not say it out loud. If you had simply asked, I would have been more than willing to explain. Explain what? The sounds Miss Hart heard may not necessarily be related to the case. You know, there was another floor that was having a shoot-off. <laughs> <laughs> they were all, um... The, 40, the 50th floor, or like the 51st floor is for storing the evidence. The 50th floor is for dealing it out. And then the 49th floor The 49th floor, the 49th floor is, is a... Payne's personal shooting range. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we play laser tag every night. <laughs> I need that. <laughs> it's it's set up like a courtroom, but then around it you've got like the various um And the judge is the judge for the laser tag for round. For the laser tag round. Who which we have multiple different ways to play laser tag. We have the like bunny bunny thing. What was the bunny version that we played where it's like one person's the bunny and you shoot them I when they I do not go. remember what you were oh. even talking about. Oh okay. They have the different modes for laser tag. <laughs> that, oh, the, so good. that is impossible. Enough of your excuses. Was the voice that Miss Hart heard really that of Miss Crane? Such shitty conversation must have had something to do with the case. What did her voice sound like? I love how Lana's voice changes in every video. Sorry. Her voice? Well, uh, it beats me. How was I supposed to know? They were both using the voice changers. Yes, the voices Miss Hart heard had been altered by a device. We must therefore question whether or not they have any bearing on the case. <laughs> you need not object just because you wish to sigh. Judge Courtney, it seems I have greatly overestimated you. No, no. Courtney is quite amazing, you see. You claim that the sounds Miss Hart heard must have no bearing on this case? Even if they do not, it doesn't change the fact that the crime took place in the storeroom. 
At the very least, the crime must have occurred before the victim went up to the rooftop. The reason being... All of the stuff... Evidence proves the crime on occurred... On the ladder that we sprayed with luminol. Right? With luminol. Oh and no, wait, no, it. it's also the blood on the hand, sorry. There's blood on the hand, and blood on the floor, there's blood on the floor, Shane the Uner woman. At first I, I thought... Need, I need that recording. That's from the Country Bears. Wait, what? There's a song, like, we're, it's like, crazy we never, uncle... No, we, or, we there's like a the song of the Country Bears where it's like, There was blood on the saddle, and blood on the floor, and a great big puddle of blood on the ground. <laughs> what? At yeah. Disney? Yeah, at Disney. Country I've Bears got done, dark. I've never done Country Bears. What the heck? It's like crazy Uncle Phil of the Country Bears. It's uh. like singing a weird song about like a guy who fell off a horse, cracked his head open, and there's blood gushing everywhere. Ew! <laughs> I'm not making this up. We need to just insert that into the... I don't want to get copyright strike. Oh. We'll, we'll insert ourselves singing it at random points. At first, I thought the person in the red raincoat was the culprit. Well. That's K. Oh, Sorry. Well, Miss Hart's testimony certainly made it sound that way. Precisely. It was because she saw that the person's hand was covered in blood. Anyone who heard her testimony would have arrived at the same conclusion. The person in the red raincoat was the culprit, and the blood on their hand was the victim's. However, if the person in the red raincoat was the victim, then the situation changes completely. Since blood can be seen in this photo, it must have been taken after the crime occurred. It seems we've been under the wrong impression in regards to the victim's condition. This photo shows the true condition of the victim. The victim was really the conductor, struck the culprit, was still alive after the attack. Wait, what? Uh... What? But see, here's the thing. I thought that the the person in that photo is, um, Blaze. You thought this was Blaze? I thought that was Blaze, because look at the physique. You're paying way too much, putting way too much stock in the physique. I know, but the victim was was still alive after the attack is stupid, right? And then struck the culprit. No, because, no, was really the, no, that, I don't even know. The victim was definitely attacked in the storeroom. Immediately afterward, the victim was seen with blood on her hand. That must mean the victim was still alive even after she was attacked. The blood on her hand must have come from her own wound. Oh. No way! Are you saying that she died from a hand injury? No. No, that is not the case. I suspect she just held her hand against the wound. It can't be seen in the photo, but at this moment she must have already suffered a fatal wound. Oh. If that's true, then it changes a lot of things, you know. It seems you understand. This refutes the allegations against Kay. Kay encountered the victim after this picture was taken. I believe at that point in time, the victim was already on the verge of death. It's likely Kay just happened to be present when the victim reached the end of her strength. That is quite the coincidence. Indeed. I can only say that she was at the wrong place at the wrong time, like Stanley Yelmatz. Prosecutor Edgeworth, it seems you have forgotten a crucial fact. Ah, you mean that, right? <laughs> he must be pretending that he hasn't noticed it, you see. What did you say? Are you implying that I forgot something? Yeah. Courtney, I think it's about time you gave him his last rights. Hey, Pops! Justine's with me, you know. Don't order her around like that. You know, even though you're my son, you're so embarrassing. <laughs> I'M NOT EMBARRASSING! Poor dude. I'm sorry, but you're both rather embarrassing. Justine, give Mr. Edgeworth his, um... Very well. I shall give him his last rites. Witness testimony. Edgeworth's contradiction. When the body was found, there were three wounds in Miss Crane's chest. I'm sure you're well aware of what kind of wounds these were, correct? Yes, she was stabbed in the heart with three pronged candelabra. I forgot the the. Is there any person who could survive such an injury? Batman. Please take a close look at the autopsy report. Can you still say the same thing after reading it? That's it. Well done, Justine. With this, Mr. Edgeworth will. I will offer a rebuttal, of course. Why would you do that? Didn't you just hear what Justine said? Of course I did. 
and I still plan to object to it. It's not fair! You're always opposing me at every turn! It was never my intention to oppose you. Huh? R really? It's simply not worth my time. I, I see. So that's how it is. Uh, yep, yep, after all, I'm... That's enough, you know. You're embarrassing your father, you see. Huh? What do you mean, Pops? She's like, I'm not gonna even speak about this. Okay, wait, I wanna see the organizer real quick. Ba -ba -na. Uh, no, I guess we can't. No, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Alright. Uh, the autopsy report. There was blood everywhere. There was blood, blood on the floor. The, blood on the, ground <laughs> in the, dirt. <laughs> the victim's body was discovered in the PIC meeting room. The estimated time of death is somewhere to between the left late chest. last night. Left chest is heart. To the left chest. Uh, heart, head, head wound, wound on post-mortem. Post what is that? Burn mean? mark on the hand. That means after they died, they received the head wound. Oh, so they hit their head on something. <laughs> yeah, so the left you side. You know, I, I am kind of concerned about one thing as well. We have not heard from that weird chick that, like, looked at her body, or, um... Bonnie Yun. Or the injection lady. Karen and Bonnie Jones. Yeah. We haven't seen them in a hot minute. <laughs> they killed her and ran. <laughs> and then performed the autopsy on her and lied about it. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm, I am very strange, weirdly, weirded out that everyone else is here except them. Hmm. It could just be a coincidence. But I'm I also just remembering we actually have a decent amount of the case left, I'm, from and what I'm, I remember. Yeah, the thing that made me think of it is like three wounds in the chest. Maybe like they're in on it and they like covered up for the autopsy. They were like, oh, actually, mm. like there's something that we shouldn't talk about. Interesting. Three wounds. That sounds rather painful. Indeed. We must punish the culprit accordingly. I. I. Okay. Do not listen to what she says. Judge Courtney, please continue your reasoning. She's so cold. Very well. She had three wounds. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I'm sure you're well aware of what kind of wounds these were. Correct? <laughs> this was not just any wound. No, no, no this, this was, was stab wounds. wounds. <laughs> Why I... don't you ask Sebastian instead? Why did I say bur burn bird wounds? This was not just any dusty seed. This, this was, was bird, bird seed. <laughs> of course, Sebastian knows all about it. Huh? I, I do? Uh, yeah, I know everything. He's obviously lying. Sebastian, maybe you should sneak a peek at the autopsy report, you know? Like the idiot you are. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, the fatal wound was caused by the candelabra. Oh, so that's how it was. You are an idiot. <laughs> how did this guy graduate? <laughs> the, the cause of the wound was just as Sebastian said. Yes, she was stabbed in the heart. Maybe three. he's maybe he's really book smart, but just has absolutely no practical maybe, knowledge. I was about to say maybe he's like not street smart. I don't know, or me. Uh, I don't know, Sebastian. Like I like how it's like the subversion though, because like every prosecutor, it's like they were top of their class, like super smart, like prodigy, pro yeah, yeah, yeah. A huge prodigy. And then like it's like this guy's just stupid. Most guys not right. And then there's Payne, who's just kind of meh. He's okay at doing the cases. <laughs> this guy snapped his neck and died instantly. He must have written this message after he died. <laughs> Okay, except for that. Uh, how am I still employed? <laughs> He's only employed because he throws epic laser tag rounds. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Everyone, like... It's sort of like the judge always has burritos. <laughs> Pain always has laser Pain, tag. Pain's like, well, everybody, it's Wednesday night. It's the weekly laser tag. <laughs> <laughs> Every week. <laughs> Every week, in the middle of the week, we unleash <laughs> laser tag fury. <laughs> And Joe's like, this is so stupid. That's how the king Portsman of... was like the captain of the laser tag team, but then uh, there's basketball a, boy got arrested. Instead of the king of prosecutors trophy, there's also a bunch of other trophies, and they're usually for the laser tag rounds. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, uh, Edgeworth did not win any of the laser That's tag That's why rounds. Payne was in the prosecutor's office at like 4 a.m. that one case. He was just getting out of laser tag. <laughs> so the yes. ca ca cause of death was a stab wound to the heart. Is that correct? Yes. The candelabra pierced right into his heart. Her heart. Her heart! Since this was Dr. Young's medical opinion, it must be true. <laughs> Instead of Jill Crane, it's Gil Crane. Gil Crane. <laughs> the coroner's medical opinion follows my own opinion. Therefore, it's perfect. I certainly cannot ignore the autopsy reports. However... Hey! Don't ignore my opinion! However, if the cause of death was a stab wound to the victim's chest, wouldn't it contradict that piece of evidence? 
Oh, he's totally ignoring me. Justine, say something. Yes, I will not allow you to ignore my reasoning. Is there any person who could survive such an injury? At the very least, we cannot be certain that she died instantly. Even if she still had a little bit of life left, I doubt she would have held on for long. She wouldn't be able to climb a ladder. Um, can people survive after being stabbed in the chest? In some cases, maybe they can. Although maybe they can't. Huh. So in the end, which one is it? <laughs> okay, so like, that's her finger bandage and that's like a patch on her face. It looks like her finger's just like- No, I thought it was! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, until you pointed it out. Yeah. <laughs> I thought her finger was really broken. I'm like, bro, how? Oof. That was a, that's a freaking mauling finger then. Yeah, there's people like that. No such human exists. If you think they do, then first... They're Captain America. Quiet. <laughs> Captain... Ca Captain America don't have no superpowers. Yeah, it's steroids. <laughs> steroids are superpowers. <laughs> According to the autopsy report, the stab wounds to the left chest caused the fatality. Correct. The autopsy report itself is the foundation for my reasoning. In other words, I just have to shatter that foundation, right? I don't find that amusing at all. I look forward to seeing you try. Nevertheless, please. 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 <laughs> Is she from Asia now? <laughs> please take no. I'm sorry. <laughs> please take a close look at the autopsy report before you make a rebuttal. Show me that your reasoning is not just a mere conjecture. I do feel bad for people who, like, have a hard time pronouncing certain syllables. Yeah. It's like, I can't roll my R's, so... Oh, am same. I, am I really one to talk? It's, uh, it's bad Very well. for me. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? We'll be fine, Kay. There's nothing for you to worry about. Evidence that the victim was alive after the incident. If I can just find that, Kay will be... Kay needs to get rid of her Ariana Grande ponytail that she was sporting for the past two games. Yeah, I like Kay. I like Kay with this hairstyle. I like style. Kay with her hair down. It's way Actually, better. Actually, I like Kay with this personality, too. Uh, Kay before was fun, but also not helpful. But that's like pretty normal. Stabbed in the heart with a free prom candelabra. Well, if that's the case, what about the... Is there a medical record thing from the... From the doctor? Chicky? Hmm. You go back. Like, I want to see the... Oh. Nothing? Uh... Oh, is there something on the... Oh! There are no, there are no free holes in the coat. Sure. She hit them at just the right angle so that it didn't pierce the coat, but it pierced the skin. Chairman DeBest, do you know what this is? It seems to be a red raincoat. How about it, Courtney? The victim, Miss Crane, was wearing this earlier. Prosecutor Edgeworth, may I re must I repeat myself with my explanation to you all over again? I suppose it just might come to that. Judge Courtney, answer me this. This red raincoat was stained with blood. Do you happen to remember where specifically those blood stains were located? Of course I do. They were on the hood. Wait, it can't be. Mm -hmm. What does this mean? I'm stupid. <laughs> He's honestly kind of stupid. <laughs> Judge Courtney, were there any other blood stains besides the ones on the hood? Also, can we get the video recording of him talking to me in the prison? Oh crap, we were videoing that. <laughs> uh -oh. the, prison, the prison has video the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we're totally doing this illegally. Wait, you guys were recording that? Oh crap. <laughs> That's what we should have done the whole time. They have recordings all the time in the prison. Ooh. Uh, you know card, just, pretend you didn't hear any of this. No, you know what I just realized? If they have recordings all the time at the prison, like, it would suck to work security because you're there for everything, including when people are sleeping or, like, taking yeah. a dump. Not <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> Not cool, man. None. We're detected. Don't you think it's strange? The victim died from a stab wound to the chest. In that case, there should have been blood stains on the front of the raincoat. However... The only blood they found was on the hood. This is a huge contradiction. 